There's a treat for our listening audience. We have a special guest here on his break between two performances today of the Broadway show Seawall, A Life, with a monologue from that show. Here's the one and only Jake Gyllenhaal. When she tells me she might be pregnant, I'm in the middle of roasting a chicken. Uh, I mean, to be specific, I'm in the middle of basting a chicken that I'm in the middle of roasting, and at the core of the recipe, there's a lot of butter, so you have to keep basting the bird, otherwise all that's gonna happen is the butter's gonna burn, and it's one of these digital ones, so it has a little screen on it. Make no mistake, there's really no messing around with a digital pregnancy test. And she asked me if I'm excited. Uh-huh, definitely. You? Same, excited. Oh, that's cool. It's okay to feel weird. No, I know. It's a lot. Uh-huh. To take in. True. <laughs> We're smiling. So, okay. So, let me know if you need any help with the chicken. Um, at lunch, we don't say anything to anyone. It feels like we're having an affair, you know, like in a good way, uh, like we're telepathic or something, you know, like we're the only ones who know the entire world is about to change. When I was a teenager, my dad walked into my bedroom, and it's so dark, I literally have no idea what time it is, and being a teenager and a miserable one at that, I tell him to get out of my room and go put some clothes on, and he says he can't feel one of his arms. What do you mean? It's in my arms. What is? It's hard to describe. Well, I mean, come on, Dad. I mean, like, try. Uh, tingling. 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 My mom is away, so I begrudgingly get out of bed, and I follow my dad back in my parents' bedroom, and he lies down on my parents' bed, and he asks me to lie down next to him. What? Please. Uh-uh, no way. This is too weird. Like some sort of semi-clothed father-son boundary has most definitely been crossed. Please. Fine, whatever. I do it. Reluctantly, I lie down next to him, and we fall back asleep. And when the sun comes up, it wakes us up, both more or less in tandem, and I call the doctor, the tingling spread to his legs. And while we wait for the ambulance, which to be honest, I think is completely over the top, we eat powdered Entenmann's donuts together on my parents' bed. The first time my wife met my parents, when we were still just boyfriend and girlfriend, my mom made a roast chicken. And about halfway through the meal, for seemingly no discernible reason at all, my dad gets out of his seat and he leaves the room. And my mom just keeps eating, irrespective. It's not unlike when a group of people collectively refuse to acknowledge a fart. <laughs> um, I mean, even though the effort it takes to ignore the fart is arguably greater than the effort it would take to just out the person responsible for the fart. And I find him in the kitchen, and he's leaning over the stove, and he's crying. And I ask him what's wrong, and he says, without looking up at me, he says, it's okay, I'm fine, go eat. Well, clearly you're not. What is going on? I say to my mom, I say, what is going on? Why is he crying? And she says, without looking up from her plate full of bones, she says, he's been having some, you know, he's not been feeling too good recently, these past couple of weeks. Well, what kind of not feeling too good? You know, pains in his arms, his chest, that sort of, you know, no, pain, pain, what kind of pain? My dad says he doesn't want to call an ambulance. I say, sorry, and I proceed to do the exact and contrary opposite. So my wife and I, we've managed to narrow it down to the following. Ada, Abigail, Audrey, Beatrice, Connie, Doris, she vetoes that one pretty quickly, my wife, Florence, Mary, Melissa, Albert, Anthony, Barney. I love the idea of having a Barney. As I, uh, Felix, Dustin, Elliot, Norbert. I repeat, Norbert. I remember reading somewhere, or maybe somebody telling me, about this idea that there are three kinds of deaths. The first is when our body ceases to function. The second is when we bury the body, or I guess set it on fire. Uh, and the third is the moment, sometime way in the future, when our names are said, are spoken aloud for the very last time. And I'm thinking to myself, but I don't say it, I wonder who is going to say our child's name for the last time. The doctor says, uh, he explains, he says, 
the plan is to perform an angioplasty, that they're going to open up my dad's chest and they're going to run a stent through one of the arteries surrounding his heart. And the idea being that the stent, kind of like the ribs of a brand new umbrella, will inflate my dad's ailing artery and get the blood pumping again. And everyone seems pretty optimistic, including the doctors. And the... <laughs> The day the operation rolls around and they open my dad up and they discover right then and there that the artery of choice is too badly damaged because the heart never fully recovers from a heart attack and the operation is aborted and all of a sudden everyone seems a lot less optimistic and I'm asking the doctor, what's next? So is there like a plan B? Well, that is a good question. It's really dark when she wakes me up. I have absolutely no idea what time it is, and she shows me the sheets, and I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be looking at. Oh, whoa, is that blood? What do you want to do? How many weeks are you? Like 10. You want to go to the hospital? It's the middle of the night. I don't care. We'll call a cab. I mean, whatever you want. The room they make you wait in is filled with pregnant women. Uh, some of the pregnant women have their other children with them, and some of the other children are sitting really still, and some of them are running around colliding into things, like crash test dummies. Uh, everyone is on edge. I guess we're maybe all sitting here thinking about the death of our unborn children we don't yet have. At least I know I am. I'm sort of melodramatically mourning my non-existent child. <laughs> and one of the stenographers asks my wife to take off her jeans and her underwear, and she does this behind a weird little curtain. And I've obviously seen my wife completely naked, like, a lot, but for some reason, I decide to turn around. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, but I don't say it, I, I wish someone would instigate some kind of small talk, you know? <laughs> like the way my dentist does, you know, but nobody does, including me. Instead, my wife just lays down in silence and she braces herself and I take a hold of one of her hands, or maybe she grabs mine, it's hard to tell, and I'm looking at her, or maybe she's looking at me, we're looking at each other, and I want to kiss her, and I want to tell her that I love her, but I don't. And on the screen, there's what looks like an x-ray of a pile of tiny kitten bones. Huh. So everything's okay? Most definitely. Congratulations. We're smiling. <laughs> I feel like peeling open my ribs and asking her to marry me all over again. <laughs> Plan B is a pacemaker. A pacemaker with a defibrillator. And not only will this particular pacemaker monitor my dad's sluggish heart rate, but as or when his heart rate becomes dangerously low or erratic, this particular pacemaker will serve up a little shock, like in a good way. But we have to wait. We have to wait until his heart rate can come up just a little bit. And I'm asking the doctor, how come? Well, in order to operate, we have to sedate your father. I don't understand. We can't risk lowering his heart rate any further. I, I don't understand. Your father has heart failure. His arms, his hands, my dad's feet, they balloon like Popeye. We're having to rub moisturizer into his skin because his skin is starting to crack. And the hospital insists that he adopt a diabetic menu, and he hates everything there is to hate about the hospital's diabetic menu except for the Jell-O. Um, rhapsodizing about the virtues of this particular brand of Jell-O quickly becomes my dad's favorite pastime. No one is safe from my father's Jell-O love. <laughs> Uh, I get a text message from my grandmother, and she says she wants to come and visit him with my aunt and my uncle, that they want to come visit him, my dad. And all of a sudden, I realize that probably nobody has told any of my relatives anything. So I text back, great, G-R-T, looking forward to seeing you, the letter U, all X. We're passing around an empty cheese casing, as in those, you know, those sort of, I think they're made of wicker. You know, it's like the kind of thing that usually houses a camembert or like that Swiss cheese. I don't know what it's called. And the woman running the class, she's saying something about how when the cervix stretches to the circumference of this empty cheese casing, then and only then will the second stage have begun. And I am writing down as much as I can. Three, 10, 60, plan your route, have a plan A. Most definitely make sure you have a plan B. Check for mucus plug, have bag packed, contractions app, question mark. Uh, cook a small carbohydrate meal, snacks, water, straws, trusty pillow, towel you don't care about. Uh, get a TENS machine. What is a TENS machine, question mark, brackets. TENS machine is a transcutaneous electrical something-something 
popular method of pain relief, something, something, something. It's popular in Europe and Canada, increasingly popular in the United States. I didn't realize that you could plan for a birth. In fact, I thought the exact and contrary opposite was the case. Jake Gyllenhaal.